like to call this meeting of the Bloomington School Board to order. Um, all members are in attendance. Director Corman's in the back, but she's going to join us in a minute. And we will uh, please stand and remove your hats and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Would someone like to move approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. Uh, this evening, um, is there anyone who wishes to address the school board on an item that is not on the agenda? Seeing no one come forward. Um, next, we'd like to tell you about a requirement of our 12th grade government class is to observe a governmental meeting of some sort. Things that they may attend are city council meetings, school board meetings, courtroom procedures, and the like. The social studies curriculum guide identifies essential standards, one of which is to understand the role and influence of political processes and organizations by examining the role of interest groups, think tanks, the media, and public opinion on the political process and public policy formation. I know there's some students in the uh, audience. I'd like to invite them to come forward just say their name. Um, I know they're from Jefferson High School. If you want to say your name and your teacher, and um, then you can file back to your seat. Thanks. Um, hi, everybody. My name's TJ Voigt, and my teacher is Danny Storlean. Uh, my name's Patrick Grogan, and my teacher is also Daniel Storlean. I'm Wyatt Johnson, and my teacher is also Mr. Storlean. I'm Tanner Greeley, and my teacher is also Danny Storlean. I'm John Paul Brian Jude. My teacher is also Storlean. My name is Penente Maduri. My teacher is also Mr. Storlean. I'm Nick Williams, and I have Storlean. I'm Kyle Bad. My teacher is also Mr. Storlean. My name is Michaela Byros, and my teacher is also Mr. Storlean. My name is Kathleen Florian, and my teacher is also Storlean. Thank you. At the close of this session, or after one hour, whichever is shorter, you students may ask for a signature on the agenda from any one of our administrative cabinet members who are sitting on that side of the room. And thank you for coming. <coughs> Next, would someone like to move part A of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, part A includes our uh, contracts and um, field trip approvals, things like that. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Brings us to part B. First is the American Indian Education Transmittal Resolution. Be it resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 271 accepts the resolution of concurrence by the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee for the 2014 15 school year. Second. Second. Thank you. I would like to um, welcome you to the table. Um, Heidi Hecker is our. American Coordinator. Indian mm -hmm. Coordinator, American Indian Coordinator. Coordinator. And would you like to introduce your guest? Sure, I sure will. I'll start on my left here at Lisa Benjamin, who works with me in Indian education. Uh, next month will be five years that she's been with us, and five great years. She's added so much to our program. Patty Weitenheimer is the chair of the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee. We have Heather Deutschlander, and then um, her daughter, Allie White who is um, a senior at Jefferson, <coughs> but full-time at Normandale Hills, uh, Normandale College, I'm sorry, currently. And so we, um, the parents committee, spent some time um, going over things. Like, maybe I'll let them explain how exactly they reached the decision for a concurrence. So I'll hand that over to Patty. Um, well, we meet on a monthly basis. And we met with um, Dave Heistad, am I saying yep. his name yep. right? Yep. <laughs> and looked at achievement for our population of students, which is about, what, 100 and? Right now we, we have, have, have uh, pre-K to 12, we have, have about 160 students. 160 students, Native American descent. Excuse me, could you get her pull the microphone mm -hmm. a little oh, bit? Oh, thank you. And so um, as a group, um, 
um, we decided that we concur with um, and that we agree that, and I'm just gonna go ahead and read this. Where is, where does it start? Okay, our group, the American Indian Parent Advisory Council for Bloomington Schools, voted yes on the transmittal of resolution. Although we do concur that the district is meeting student need overall, um, we were hesitant to do so based on the fact that the gap in achievement remains a great concern. So um, we made a recommendation. Um, our parent group would like to see American Indian students have access to rigorous and robust enrichment learning opportunities that are offered through the district beyond the school day. Um, the major obstacles to access these opportunities are primarily the high cost to participate, the location of programs, and the transportation. And um, we noted 69% of Bloomington's American Indian families are free or reduced lunch eligible. Do you wanna read the acknowledgements? Sure, I'll read the acknowledgements. We are, however, appreciative of the collaborative efforts of the elementary curriculum steering committee and staff in regards to implementing the new social studies standards pertaining to American Indians. Heidi Hecker has been included in the ongoing process of the curriculum development, and we are optimistic regarding continuing this collaboration. With the assistance of the curriculum and instruction department, Indian Ed is able to put their lending library online where teachers have greater access to it. As a result, we're happy to report an incredible increase in the use of Indian edu education resources. More than 600 books have been checked out over the past three years by district teachers. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the panel? Yeah, did, did you say uh, that there were some hesitations about concurrence? I mean, what, what do you think were the, or what is the concern about student achievement? And uh, Heidi, um, what, how different is it now from back to, was that like three years ago when mm -hmm. we talked about these non-concurrence back then? Yes, there, we have seen an increase in the math scores, but the math scores have gone up and then our reading is starting to go down. But even with our math scores going up, we're still experiencing a significant gap in the overall achievement, according to the testing. How bad is the gap? Um, I don't have it, the numbers in front of me, sorry. Could, could you provide that information mm -hmm. later? Sure. More detail on you know what's mm -hmm. happening with reading, yep. math, and... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh. Yes, uh, in, in your report you're saying that um, one of your recommendations is to cr increase access to the extracurricular programs. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many of the 160 students are currently participating in these extracurricular activities? When we looked at this, I think about two years ago, mm -hmm. there was, it was not significant at all, a couple. Okay. A couple I mean, you said there's, there's barriers. I mean, are you guys reaching out to these families and trying to encourage them to participate and they're, they're mentioning these barriers that's prohibiting them from doing it? The families that we've talked to said they can't afford it. Okay. They simply can't afford it. And like mm -hmm. Patty said, we say that 69% mm -hmm. of our families qualify for free or reduced, or the children qualify for free or reduced meals. And so with the, some of the, and. I don't think there's scholarships available, or at least the families have said they don't know how to apply. Okay. And on the application, or not on the application, but the registration forms, there's no place on there to apply for any scholarship money. I guess I have a question, if anyone has any data on that. Do you know how many people that do get free or reduced lunches of other pe persons of color that do access the extracurricular programs? We can get you that information. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so to help that out, I think it would be more scholarships and transportation. Would you say those are probably the two biggest barriers that we need to look mm -hmm. at? Okay. Thank you. Another question. Well, raise his hand first. Oh, oh I, I went first. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm I'm losing my voice. First, I, I just want to say thanks for for coming. I appreciate. Uh, Appreciate you coming here tonight. At least that's congratulations on five years. Heidi, it's always nice to see you. Patty, Heather, Allie, thank you for coming. Uh, appreciate 
everything that you guys are doing. And um, I want you to know that, that you can share with us at any time. It doesn't have to be in these formal settings. You can let us know how things are going, what you need, what you want. Mm -hmm. and, and we hope to see more of you uh, more frequently. So just let us know. There are, we, we all have email addresses, and you can get to us. But thank you very much for what you do, and thanks for coming. <coughs> um, is there anything that comes to mind policy-wise that the board is doing or not doing that could, that's either helping or hindering uh, Native American education in our district? I can't think of anything policy-wise. Do you feel well, that you are fairly reflected in our curriculum? Parents working want to on it. <laughs> working on it. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was just at a conference, and uh, the the woman said, "You know, I went through. She was in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, but she said it, it where I went to school. When I graduated, uh, I think she said she was from Colombia or, or Venezuela. She said I never thought that any." Latino had ever invented anything mm -hmm. because I never saw myself reflected in the curriculum. And a lot of people have said that if you don't see your own culture reflected in the curriculum, that you will become, you're more likely to become less engaged yeah. in, in school just in general. Mm -hmm. So that's why I asked the question, um, if you feel, uh, not to put you on the spot, but just if you felt that, that we're doing a, a good job of, of reflecting Native American in the uh, curriculum. I think there's a, a history of that that we experienced, speaking for myself, growing up, that definitely were not ref, you know, represented in the curriculum and marginalized overall, but I'm just really encouraged by some of the work that Heidi is being um, included in developing um, curriculum. We, we did some work and uh, gave our input on some of the standards regarding Native Americans. And um, so it's moving in the right direction. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But overall, you're right. There's we have we're moving in the right direction, but we have still a long way long to go. Long way to go. Yeah. Because sometimes too, when we found that there is inclusion, sometimes it's the very negative aspects of of history that <coughs> is not balanced with the positive in, um, mm -hmm. influences like inven inventions and contributions. Um, so uh, we do see some uh, movement in the right direction. We still have a lot of uh, ground to cover. So I, I'm happy to see that we are uh, making some movement in that direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Dr. Thomas? Yeah, for the past three years, we have talked about um, certain concerns that, that uh, about family and family involvement, family engagement. Is anything different now? Does anything seem to be different? Or do you get the feeling that some of that had some improvement? What is What happened with that? With family, specifically uh, yes. for American Indians? Yes, specifically. Within our program? I think we. it depends upon what we're offering. We get some pretty good. We just had uh, the Zoomobile. We got some outside funding to bring the Zoomobile in. And we had, I think, about 50 uh, parents and their children attend that. And um, we had a big book distribu distribution in December, almost equal numbers. So um, we see it depends on what we offer. If it's something engaging, like books, free books and, and the Zoomobile, we tend to get a, a pretty good number. If you're talking about parent engagement in, this, you know, in the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee specifically, is that what you're mm -hmm. talking about? Part of that, yes. I think we... Um, I don't know, we have six committee members right now, and I think for our size community, I think that's a pretty good representation. Um, of course, we'd always like more, but I think we have a pretty solid committee right now. Have the parents been able to participate of um, discussions or activities that kind of allow them to um, express their concerns or, you know, we talked about that before of, you know, how difficult it can be because of many different circumstances that families go through, not because they don't want to participate, 
but because of several different um, circumstances that sometimes we don't get to hear the voice of all the families, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, do you think that you as a group have provided uh, for certain opportunities for parents to maybe be able to participate a little bit more and have they been able to provide some more input that can be beneficial to, to them and to their students? Mm -hmm. Every year we um, offer what's called a public hearing and we are bound by federal law to do that. Mm -hmm. And so every year we have a public hearing and the achievement scores, um, program offerings, and a variety of other topics are put on the table to discuss. And so that's the great opportunity that we give families to, or parents specifically, to um, both be informed and to share their, their thoughts about that. And I think every time that we have different gatherings, um, there's always some kind of discussion about meeting the ne needs of our kids and most specifically their you know, children in, the, in their immediate family. Mm -hmm. So when you said you have 160 students, that's about how many families do you think? Um, when I do mailings every so often, it's about 90 maybe. Oh. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I think, what's the lending library? Indian, our Indian education program has a very large Indian authored library that we have been able to purchase because one of the things that we've discovered is there's not a lot of books in our media centers that are written by American Indian authors. And so when we, we had a very strong summer program for a number of years called Reading for Life. And so the only thing that we read in that month were books authored by American Indians. And so we kind of expanded off of that to books for middle school and high school level, as well as some movies. And we uh, are now offering it to our teachers. So they can either you know, preview it to see if it's something they want to use in their class. We have some who um, every year, at certain times of the year, certain times in their curriculum cycle, <laughs> check out class sets and use them in the classroom. And along with that, we have a culture trunk too that teachers are able to check out. And it's been culture trunk. The culture trunk is really <laughs> awesome. It's um, on the yeah. seasonal aspects of the Ojibwe and the Dakota people. And so mm -hmm. within that trunk are different um, hands-on items that teachers can use to teach about what happens in the fall or the winter, along with supporting lesson plans and, and books. Pretty nice, right? Is it available to board members? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do a yeah. workshop if you'd like to have me back. Right, I'll yeah. do it. You asked for it. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Uh, I just maybe if, if Allison wanted to contribute a little bit to it as a, as a st student who's soon graduating and participated in a program for many years. I feel like um, the curriculum is Um, I feel like it's been really improving because as growing up as a child, it wasn't really there when I started out. Like, I would have people ask me, like, the main concern is people see American Indians as, like, very much past versus present, and it, we're kind of, like, viewed as being kind of stuck in the past and we're not really here in the present. So I feel like that's been improving and we're still trying. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's no further comments. All in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate you. Thank you. Number two on the agenda is right sizing the budget, finalized list of budget adjustments. Madam Chair, be it resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 271 approves the right sizing the budget list of budget adjustments to $4 million as listed below and directs administration to develop the 2015-16 budget using these adjustments to meet right sizing the budget target. Staffing reductions of $2.6 million, operational adjustments of $0.7 million, budget shifts of $0.7 million. Thank Second. You. Thank you. Our Finance Director Rod Zivkovich is here to do you have a presentation or you just take questions? Well, uh, Chair Barlotta, Superintendent Fujitaki, board members, uh, we've uh, talked through this list uh, both in a study session on uh, the, I believe it was the 20th and then also on the 26th. Uh, this is the final list that we presented to the board a little over a week ago. 
uh, for their approval tonight. Okay. Anybody have questions? Just, uh, do we have the list so we can put it on the slide there so people can see what the list entails? Might be helpful. There we go. Thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else? Director Corman? Yeah, well, I just want to say um, thank you for for trying as hard as you as you try and making those um, second adjustments. Um, I can see that, you know, when it comes to operational adjustments, you know, the family engagement part is included there where 70,000 is, um, you know, going to stay in the general fund and not be used to um, funding the family engagement. Um, however, what I would like to say is I hope that we continue to look at it as the, the part of the integration money that goes towards it, that we continue to look at that as money that can continue to be put in the classroom rather than salaries because I believe it would be more beneficial for them, for the students. Thank you. Anyone else? No further comments? All in favor of this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Number three is the rejection of a single bid received for Kennedy High School in Valley View Middle School. Madam Chair? He resolved the School Board of Independent School District 271 rejects the single bid received for work scope 23-A mechanical and approves publicly re-advertising for new bids for this work scope. Second. Thank you. Uh, this is a uh, project that is part of our all facility uh, budgets for the summer. Uh, what we did is when we bid out the projects for security and also HV for uh, both at Kennedy High School and at uh, Valley View Middle School. We had only one bidder uh, for the mechanical, which was considerably higher than what was budgeted for that cost. Uh, based on our architect and our construction management company, they recommend us going back out for bid uh, for this. We are keeping uh, the other bids for the other parts, the non-mechanical pieces, and um, will be brought to the board on uh, I believe it's the 9th of March. Um, it's still within the 60-day limit of approving uh, the bids that were in place at that point in time. So uh, we're still in good timing. Um, it's just that we're trying to look at uh, what is the, getting the best for our prices. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments? So is there any um, reason or any belief of why there's only one, one bid? Is it because we bid it lower than they can do it so only one person put a bid out or no i i think that right now the the way the economy is and the rest in the way of construction it's tougher to get bids on these projects because there's a lot of projects out there both in schools and in um the uh, private sector so hopefully we can our construction company can encourage more bidders for the next round Okay, so when you say that they were over budget, their bid was, was is it substantially over the budget or? Yes. Okay so, okay, so hopefully we'll be able to get some more bids that are more competitive. Right, and, and if we've still come in with a bids that are not conducive to the budget, um, we'll have to defer that project for to the following year. Okay, so this is something that can be deferred for yes. another year. And, okay, okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Number four is a policy review. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Madam Chair. Oh, oh I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, second. <laughs> Resolve that the School Board of Independent School District number 271 approves the second reading of policy 524, internet acceptable use and safety. Second. Thank you. John Weiser, our Director of Technology and Information Services is here to 
Um, yes, answer any questions? Do you have a statement? Uh, Chair, Bo Chair Bartolotta, Superintendent Fujitaki, board members, this is the second reading of policy 524. It deals with uh, internet acceptable use and safety, um, use of computers in our district, uh, internet access in the district, use of the network by staff and students. We made a minor uh, word change just to one heading that was out of alignment between the first reading on January 26th and today. Otherwise, the document is as you read it on January 26th. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Um, Madam Chair, Mr. Weiser, this is such a uh, an interesting area. Is the whole policy and the regulations included in the student handbook so they're all aware of what is in and what's out? We have a, a truncated, not a seven page document, but we have a truncated version. It's a one pager or even a half page that goes into all the student handbooks. Thank you. If you down later in the regulations, you'll see an implementation section, and the implementation section links to that text. I'm sure all of our and students in the audience tonight have read that. And abide by it. All right. <laughs> thumbs up. We got some thumbs up back there. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 There's also a resolution regarding policy 307. Madam Chair, be it resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 271 approves the deletion of policy 307 entitled site-based councils. Second. Thank you. Our uh, Assistant Superintendent Chris Lennox is here to discuss it with us. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Superintendent Fujitaki and members of the board, uh, recent legislative changes to world's best workforce and the district's work uh, to align our efforts uh, around pathways to graduation are moving us toward more organizational alignment rather than the independent autonomous site-based work. Um, the work the school board has already done on policy 603 by establishing the pathways advisory committee uh, as well as the alignment of our strategic plan to the three component framework has created clear structures and expectations uh, at, at a site level so rather than creating independent councils, our sites are actually creating teams that are aligned with the three components and pathways to graduation structure. Therefore, uh, administration is recommending the deletion of school board policy 307 site-based councils. Thank you. Director Lee. Could you give us an example of that? It, it, like a uh, site-based council that is now going to be something different or not exist? Uh, yeah, it's really about the work. So within the policy, if uh, in fact on in regulation, I think it's page three, so um, site decision areas, as you went through that, um, some of what is there uh, is really, rather than leaving it up to the individual site to determine, uh, example w that we just went through with with right sizing, the board was pretty clear that a thin ice area might be fifth grade band or music. We're not leaving that up to the site or a site-based council to determine that. Once curriculum's determined uh, and pushed down through, it's this is what we're doing, we're gonna implement. It's a district-wide focus and expectation to implement um, specific programs um, in such a way that they're aligned throughout the district rather than autonomous or site-based up to the individual uh, program. So now I know, uh, for instance, Ridgeview Elementary went through PBIS training, and so they had their site-based group that did the training, and they were sort of the leadership team at the school. Is that right. not affected, yep. or is nope. that affected by that? No, uh, each site still has a leadership team. So uh, everybody has their district leadership, or their site building leadership team that will look at uh, instruction, management, and the supports, the learning supports that go along with making sure they're, they're operating um, in alignment. And then uh, our intention is to make sure that that's driven through the organization. So you wouldn't have something that would be available to a child at one site but not available at another site. We'd wanna make sure that, uh, that it could vary based on percentage or need, but it, would, it shouldn't be, we can get it here but we can't we can't get it there. Mr. Steiger. As a parent, I spent a few years on an elementary site council for my children in elementary. 
So these teams, is there still room for parent participation on that? What percentage yeah. of the teams are parents? Do you have any idea yeah. or what the? Um, two different levels. So every one of our, it doesn't undo the PTA, you know, the parent advisory groups that, that exist. Uh, what we're really trying to do is the alignment to pathways to graduation around the three components. So the building leadership teams are really built around those three components rather than around any individual program or um, other interest area. They're, they're focused on um, alignment through the system. Yeah. So certainly we're encouraging parent engagement, parent involvement, family engagement, um, but not um, at the expense of alignment to other district priorities set by the school board or, or other. Thank you. Any other? I guess the, um, it, uh, when I first read through this, I just thought, oh, it's, this wouldn't be a big deal. But I guess the concern that I'm having is that if we take away local control, so to speak, that um, my concern with that we may foster a, a, a a feeling of well we're doing this because they're making us versus um, we have control over certain things that we could could or couldn't do in our school before or maybe now we can't offer this because now the district is now saying that we can't do it do you see that as, as being an issue um, like for instance when you said well now this program won't it's not that it's available here and not available there well would there be a situation where now it's not available either place not if the board directs it, right? So uh, the example I used with music or band specifically at fifth grade, uh, as, as a body, you get to determine what we offer to whom and at what cost. Correct. So if you said this is going to be available, we want it to be available across all of our, our sites, then we would go out and make sure that that's part of that expectation. Okay. Sorry, one more question. Um, are there any existing site consoles and in our buildings now that would be being dissolved because of this, or uh, are there not any? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, it was really um, some years back, I think, when the, the um, kind of flavor of the day was to have more of that site-based autonomy, uh, and that's, that's moved back. My experience when my kids were in high school was they couldn't get enough parents to show up for it, um, so I did participate in it in the short time they had it. So I know they haven't had one for a few years, so. And I think uh, elementaries probably have more engagement okay. than, than secondaries okay. uh, do across right. the board. But so it's not like there'd be a group of people that would be saying, oh, well, we can't have site council anymore. Um, no, and one of the things you did, policy 603, right, the Pathways Advisory was to have a representative from each one of our sites okay. coming up through reporting mm -hmm. to that group and then back to you. So you have at least one and often a second sitting on that committee. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks. Well, that brings us to the report of the closed session that we had uh, after our last meeting, January 26th. The school board superintendent and members of the cabinet, along with the district's legal counsel, met in closed session on Monday, January 26th, for the purpose of discussing negotiation parameters. The discussion was preceded by a brief presentation on the current salary schedule. No school board action was taken or required. Thank you. Next, we'll have board member reports. Hang on. First. Um, <laughs> My early childhood advisory committee meets this Thursday, so I have nothing new to report other than they are still in need of a stereo receiver, if anyone has one laying around that, to, uh, uh, to donate. That'll go along with the speakers that they're gonna be getting for when they have uh, events where they need, uh, where they want their laptop uh, sound system to be louder. <laughs> um, and then we met earlier this evening with the Youth Advisory Council, had a group of seniors from both Jefferson and Kennedy, I believe there was nine total, had some great discussion with them um, about some of the community education and, and their involvement. Uh, also had a good discussion about uh, offering zero hour versus summer courses, so that was very good. Our next meeting is with the middle schoolers here on March 23rd. 
uh, at 5.30, and then we'll be meeting with the middle schoolers and the high schoolers at VEEP on April 13th at 5, uh, going until no later than 6.30. Thank you. Anyone else? Madam Chair? I, I, I don't want to dive in first all the time. Um, <laughs> So I had an opportunity to attend the uh, PTSA council meeting. This is the once, uh, once a month council meeting where all the reps from every school come together. It's actually in, in that half of our room. We pull the dividers across. It's a great time for um, people who in attendance to catch up with what's going on in all the different schools, uh, gain some perspective. So I appreciate everything that the uh, PTSA council is doing. Um, I was also uh, fortunate enough to uh, attend Olson Elementary's White Tiger Rally. That, uh, that happened uh, two, uh, a, Friday, a week ago on Friday. Um, somehow or another, I was uh, uh, talked into getting up on stage and, and doing my best to participate in jump rope for, I think it was jump rope for life. Uh, there, was a, there was a student group that came in from a Minneapolis school and they were just fabulous with, uh, what do you call it, double dutch, where you have two ropes going back and forth and back and forth, and you have to count. And <coughs> I was able to count to two, so <laughs> I, did, I did make it around once or twice, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a uh, great energy. Um, uh, Paul, Meyer, Paul Meyer is the principal over there. I want to say thanks to the staff over there for all the uh, fun stuff that they do for their kids, make sure that everybody's... Uh, um, dialed in and, and, and learning well. Um, also, um, just this last Friday, it was a half-day um, conference of uh, future leaders over at the Bloomington Hilton on uh, France and, and American Boulevard. And that's put on by the uh, uh, business community leaders uh, here in town. We had, uh, um, I want to say, 14 or 15 tables round tables, there were three presentations, and uh, in between each presentation, the students would move the tables, and there were two adult facilitators. I happened to be with a uh, park ranger from the Minnesota Valley National Wildlife, and uh, she was sharing her perspective on uh, uh, opportunities um, um, just to get out and uh, move around and in, in, uh, enjoy Bloomington's outdoors. But there were representatives from all the different uh, business communities here in Bloomington, and the kids could go around and ask questions and talk. And uh, um, once they found out I was on the school board, they asked about, they did not ask about toilet paper, but they did ask about the, um, the school lunches. What could I do to change the school lunches? So we had some interesting conversations about school lunches, and some of them liked it a lot. Some of them had some opportunity for change. But that's a, that's a really interesting venue, um, and, and I would... Uh, encourage any of the students that are listening in tonight to uh, look into the possibility of, of coming next year. Uh, that's, that's about all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, last week I attended the officer's training for clerk. It's always, you know, good information, lots to learn. Uh, and uh, last Friday I attended the AMSD uh, meeting. Um, Really interesting um, conversations too, and a lot of conversations regarding bills that will have to do with teachers evaluation and QCOM. So that will be something that um, we will be talking about, I'm sure, in the next, um, in the next weeks. And, um, oh, I have to report that the Legislative Committee for the School Board met also last week, and that will be Don and Tom and myself, and uh, we had a good meeting, and uh, we were going to be meeting with Superintendent Fujitaki to discuss some of the, the bills we're going to be going through, and then uh, we'll bring a report back to you, to the board. Thank you. We're getting ready also for our forum, our next forum with the legislators. Thank you. Um, I attended um, the PTSA. I'm, since we've changed committees, I'm now the rep to the PTSA um, committee. And so I attended their meeting, and they had a recap of their Winter Parent Academy and talked a little bit about their Spring Academy there. 
And there was also an update on Next Technologies for, for Learning Plan. Um, I'm also now um, the representative of the Diversity Committee. And so the Diversity Committee talked about um, the merger of the Family Engagement and the Office of Equity and Education, a little bit of how that's going to look. And um, I also have homework from there because they're all reading a book. So, and then we're gonna have discussion. And so the book is uh, Courageous Conversations About Race, A Field Guide for Achieving Equity in Schools. So that will be part of that committee's work and discussion coming up um, after we all read the book. I also um, had the opportunity to um, fill in for Rockin' Readers at um, Valley View where I'm the ambassador to that elementary. Um, while they're out of town in February, and my daughters also volunteered with me, so that was a great event. I was very impressed that the kindergartners were reading so well, the kindergartners that I worked with, so it was very impressive. Um, I also attended the Valentine's Day dance at Southwood, where I was um, got to start the hopathon and have all the little kids jump up and down, so that was um, very fun, and they were so cute, all dressed in their Valentine's outfits for the dance. Um, I also um, was at game night at Oak Grove Elementary, and and then I had a chance to also attend um, Bloomington Gold, which was um, a show choir competition with schools from um, other states. I think there's maybe 20 schools that compete. Um, just an excellent event. I just want to say that you know all of the things: the Valentine's Day dance, game night, and Bloomington Gold. You know those events are so spectacular because of the parents that volunteer to do the work at these um, events. You know, they're doing the concession stand at the dance and they're doing the book fair at um, Oak Grove and the volunteers that put that um, Bloomington Gold together, unbelievable. They were there at, I think, 5.30 Saturday morning and they were still there at midnight, Saturday night volunteering to put that um, together. I it was also, I thought, a really great um, a showcase of Bloomington schools because I sat by people from Wisconsin and Iowa and other schools when I attended and one lady told me oh we enjoyed it so much last year that we had to come back this year um, another lady commented on it was such a well-run event that they were so happy with it so I just thought it was a very good um, showcase and our students also were a great host to have all these other schools in their building so thank you thank you anyone else Well, I have a few things. Um, today I attended the National African American Parent Involvement Day at Indian Mounds, and it was a, an interesting day. They had, um, the, the section I went to was um, Know Thy Impact. And they talked about the impact they have on their children. It was very interesting. Um, I do want to remind you of two events that are coming up. Tomorrow evening is the Bloomington United for Youth recognition event um, at 6 p.m. so it's February 10th 6 p.m. in the City Council Chambers and all board members are invited to attend and to congratulate the honorees and I also want to make sure that all the board members have on their calendar the March 17th MSBA breakfast which will be held here in this boardroom at 7 a.m. and it will um, include a discussion regarding the Career and College Academy I want to make sure you have that on your calendar. Thank you. I'll turn it over to the superintendent. Madam Chair, thank you. I have three topics. The first is that our district is moving from our current email platform to Gmail <laughs> as our new email platform. And that conversion is scheduled to take place in March. To prep for that conversion, our director of technology, John Weiser, will be giving a Gmail class to the board <coughs> because the board will be getting this as a group. The administration requests a motion to establish a study session, no, a staff development session, and that's for February 23rd at 6.15 p.m. So may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor of the study uh, staff, staff, develop staff development session on February 23rd at 6.15 p.m., please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Following that staff, development session will be a board meeting that's scheduled to start at 7 p.m. At the close of that meeting, there'll be a study session. Uh, the second topic is about the Career College 
Academy. That's our new program that's designed to help juniors and seniors get a jump start on a career. If the public wants to know more about this program, please visit our website. We also have another opportunity to learn about this program. We're having an informational open house and it's gonna be on February 12th from 2.30 in the afternoon to 7 p.m. at night. It is at the Bloomington Career and College Academy and that's located at the former Lincoln High School. It is on the north side of the campus. It's in the building on the north side of campus. The address is 8800 Queen Avenue South and it is on the second floor. It's, on, it's in suite 219. <coughs> so the, car, the parents, students, and the public are welcome to attend. That's on February 12th, 2.30 to 7 p.m. The last topic is next week is School Board Recognition Week. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize the board for the hours that they put in every month helping produce quality education programs for our entire community. So therefore, on behalf of our com entire school community, I thank the board for their great work, their leadership, their commitment and dedication for producing and leading this outstanding school district. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Is there any other business to come before the board? If not, this meeting is adjourned. So the